Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Drug Guys team for more than half of that, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, we'll go over the overall market, cover some hype sectors, hit you with some trade zones, update you on some old trade zones, and that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off with uh, SPY here. So this was our conservative trade zone that we had set up on from two weeks prior, I believe, or two or three weeks prior now. And so came into our trade zone and, and uh, popped out of it, got to the target or just shy of the target, retraced back into it. And obviously this time now it has surpassed our target. So if you'll recall, the logic of this trade zone was just that this trend is totally fine as long as the buyers are maintaining um, over prior areas of demand. So you build an area of balance, you break out, this is a demand zone. If you continue to hold over back test of the prior demand zones, um, just like these two lows over here, we're just back test of this structure over here and this structure over here. Well, then the, that, that trend is just fine. So um, that's pretty much what happened again here, right? So the sellers, like we were talking about last week, they created notable damage by breaking down under this key supply. So finding acceptance back within this demand zone was a, a red flag for the buyers. But at the same time, on the Monday session, all that happened was we moved down to the value area low of this key demand zone over here. And then, you know, obviously on the back of the um, uh, election results and FOMC cutting another 25 basis points, market buyers are very much in full force again. And so it's pretty much right back to business for buyers, right? The gap up on Wednesday was a huge gap up. Barely, it didn't really fill much of that gap. And you'll notice where the um, low of the day was, was pretty much right up of the uh, prior all-time high of 586.112. So w what are we you know, looking at from here is, will this structure now from uh, October 9th to 30th continue to be supportive of price? If it is continuing to be supportive of price, then this trend is totally fine in the daily time frame. So that's space for a daily higher low. Anything over 567.89 is going to be good for one. But what I really care about is, again, can we find acceptance over 586.12? Can we find acceptance over 582.45? Even if sellers can bring price back under the high of 586.12, this structure is still being affirmed as demand as long as 582.45 is supportive. Okay, so buyers, again, right back to business, looking just fine. Um, if you are... If you had used this trade zone back here at this point, you know, obviously it's your past target. So you should have already taken your profits here and you can leave a stop for any remaining position under this low at 567.89. If you have no position, then you just apply this, the same exact logic, right? Like the, it's the same exact logic and we'll just apply it. We'll just move this guy over here to this area now. And it, that's pretty much the same trade idea, right? Like it does not have to be more complicated than that. This is a fundamental, um, dynamic for all markets, right? Markets simply create areas of balance, and then it will either break down, which leaves an area of supply, or it'll break out, which leaves an area of demand. And if we're breaking down, then as long as there is a supply, breakdown, supply, breakdown, the trend is fine. As long as we're doing a uh, demand breakout, demand breakout, well, then that, that buying trend is fine. So now this becomes a very reasonable area for trade, just like this was a very reasonable area for trade. And I'm sure we had you know prior examples as well but i i must have moved them or whatnot so um anyway that's that's uh pretty much it so hourly oversold conditions and the back test of this structure i think totally reasonable to be looking for um a uh, higher low place all right moving on to the queues so the queues did not come into our conservative trade zone let me just get it out of the way now and it's very similar to the SPY, right? So you've broken to a new all-time high over 503.52. You have this all-time high, uh, prior all-time high supply now acting as demand here. Um, so the idea is same, same, but different. As long as we're holding over 503.52, that's the best case scenario for the buyers. But even if the sellers can get back under 503.52, as long as these buyers can hold over 496.29, that's the point of control of this structure sitting at the prior all-time high, um, then that structure is being affirmed as demand. And then the buyers are still going to be very confident. So that is pretty much it for QQQ space for daily higher low over 44.25. And again, same idea, right? So now we just zoom out. You see, okay, well, this is the prior all-time high structure. Bunch of volume traded over here. So something along these lines, very reasonable um, to be looking for a pullback place on the QQQ. All right, something along these lines here. Very reasonable, just looking for... Uh, the prior demand zones to continue to hold price. So since we're in a blue sky breakout, 
we really only have projections to work with and we're grinding the r2 resistance right now so you'd have to be playing for the r3 which is really far away so personally i think i would prefer to just look for um, some sideways trade here so basically i wouldn't be too ambitious with targeting since we're already at the r2 for the year um, i would just look for some sideways trade over this guy and of course if we continue to hold over this guy then that keeps r2 for the year on the table but i would just do something like this you know i don't i don't want to be too uh, ambitious with the targeting because you know you just it's good to be realistic pragmatic so that's it for the cues oops all right so moving on to iwm so iwm came into our trade zone as well obviously surpassed our target with this big old gap up and now it is just slightly lagging behind the ES and the NQ. I mean, technically it's lagging significantly behind the ES and the NQ because the ES and the NQ have been ripping to new highs for quite some time. But I just mean that it is flirting with joining ES and the uh, SPY and the QQQ uh, into Blue Sky Breakout. It just has this little supply in the way from 2021, from uh, uh, November 4th to November 16th of 2021. And you can see how it's been a battle for the uh, value area low of the structure over three sessions now. So, so far, inability to get to the point of control 239.19 is a notable failure but at the same time the sellers are also failing to fill this gap down to um 224.29 and this breakout is being affirmed as long as we're finding acceptance over 228.63 so these are the two key levels that we're looking out for in the future again if you use this trade zone at this point you should have taken your profits and you can throw your stop under the local low of this demand zone um that's under 217.37 Okay, and if you have no position, then at this point, you can be looking for uh, bottom fishing plays. Again, you just go ahead and use the same exact logic and play the same, apply the same exact logic. Something like this makes a lot of sense. Trying to get back up to the point of control of this guy over here. All right, so something along these lines, um, I think makes a lot of sense for looking for pullback plays, back testing this area of demand. And then if they do hold over this area of demand, then they should be trying to come to crack away at this supply over here. Okay. Moving on to the oops. Moving on to the Dow here. So for the Dow, also came into our trade zone, surpassed our target. This targeting was just based off of the, I think the R2 for last month. Is that correct? Yes. So we were just looking for the R2 for last month because this was set up a few weeks ago. So we were just looking to get back to the R2 of, of last month because we rejected from the R1. Um, and you know I like to use these uh, pivot point projections when you're dealing with um, blue sky breakout. So. Again, same dealio. If you use this trade zone, um, you should have taken a profit. Your stop can be under this local low at 416.44. And lots of space for these buyers to defend against back test of it's really this all time high supply or prior all time high supply now. Uh, prior all time high supply now acting as demand is really what the buyers care to defend. So just got to hold over this fella here to have the most confidence in. Uh, this breakout okay and even if these sellers can get back under 433.20 as long as they can hold over 432.57 then this structure is still being affirmed as demand and it's pretty much the best case scenario for these buyers so i i'm a little hesitant to be too aggressive moving this up here because there's not a lot of volume traded here so i would actually prefer to just continue to use this trade zone here because there's a, there's much more demand that was established here and it is sitting on top of you know this big block over here so I would just continue to use this honestly um trade zone and uh like i said if you you know were in this trade using this then you should already have you know uh taken your profits so and be uh sized appropriately for any remaining position to be just a runner um so that is pretty much it for the dow here moving on to the dollar so the dollar also came into our trade zone weeks ago remember it's all about this it's all about this demand and this supply to continue to see um, this long, much longer term balance. And so got the primary target, got the secondary target, flirting with the test of the um, tertiary target here. So at this point now, though, if you did initiate from down here, it's very reasonable to be walking your stop up to under 103.245 for your last remaining position. Um, and just walk that stop up as long as you're creating areas of demand. So if you were to continue to balance sideways like this, and then break out again. Okay, great. You can walk your stop from here now to over here. Okay. Um, that's really it. At this point now, if you have no position, you're pretty much looking for a buy in here if you're a dollar buyer. Um, trying to get back up to this guy, the same exact target. 
Okay, doke, and that's just based off of uh, you. Know, you want to hold over this key demand zone, right? This key demand zone that was established pretty much right off of the real key demand zone that's contained all of this balance here. Um, just a little bit of a uh, aggressive, more aggressive play, not playing off of that lower structure, but playing off of this new structure that was built more locally. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the dollar. NBDA missed coming into our trade zone. Earnings is also next week, so you know you probably don't want to get too cute here um, with anything too aggressive. But I still think this is a very reasonable area to be looking for um, back test plays here. So we know that this guy was problematic for the buyers here. Then once the buyers were uh, able to find acceptance over it, you pretty much hold the perfect back test of the structure's value every high point of control, and then you know go for a little rip to new highs. So. I still think this is, you know, the best location just because there's much more volume traded here than there is anywhere up here. So I would still look for hourly uh, oversold conditions into this zone to be looking for pullback plays in the NVDA. It could very well just be like a trend line kind of dealio here, you know. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be that one. It would have to be like this. Alrighty. Oops. Something like that. I think very reasonable still. Um... That's really it for NVIDIA. No red flags for these buyers. That's it. Moving on to Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin came into our trade zone either. It was a bit too conservative down here. So these buyers are doing just fine on Bitcoin. Obviously broke to new um, record highs. Lots of space for a daily higher low over 6673.77. And what I really care about is can these buyers hold over this guy? So this is the all-time high structure over here. You can see how it was problematic for these buyers. Over here and over here and over here and over here and over here with the value area high rejection pretty much to the tick. Um, that being said, after rejecting from the value area high, you just held this back test of this local demand zone and then obviously ripped from your all-time high. So at this point now, the best case scenario for these buyers is to just hold over 72082.40. Doing so will uh, keep these buyers the most confident because that would mean that you are affirming this um, oops, this all-time high structure. I hate this light in here, so I just have this... Uh, just using my phone as a light because I the light in here is super bright. Um anyway, so that is pretty much it for Bitcoin. Okay. Moving on to Ethereum. So Ethereum, we had a cell setup, I believe. Yeah, so we had the cell setup, came into it, hit the target, came into it again, failed to hit get to the target, and now we have broken back over into this key uh, supply over here, which is obviously a good look for these um, buyers because all of this price action down here was the buyers trying to negate uh, this breakdown here. So they did do that by finding acceptance over 2814.2 in the moment. They should be trying to come up to here, 3083.33. If you do happen to reject from this 3083.33 level, these buyers are still doing just fine. If they can hold over, it's pretty much the same level. Like this high over here is technically a little bit higher than this low over here, but it's pretty much the same level, 2814.12. As long as they're holding over that, then this breakout has not yet been negated. Uh, lots of space for a daily higher low over 2355.43. So it's just a matter of, again, holding over this demand zone. So at this point, if you're an Ethereum buyer and you're looking for a pullback play, you're pretty much looking for something like this. You want to see if a back test of this area can hold. Not too much follow through under the point of control, ideally. And then you're looking to get back to here first. But really, if, if you can continue to, if the buyers continue to press the issue here, they should be trying to come all the way back up here, right? Because this is the area, this structure over here, from way back over here, is was the problem for these buyers over here. So if you find acceptance over this structure, which is the low of this big guy, then they should be trying to make their way back over here. So something like this, I think, is very reasonable for Ethereum uh, in the short term. CCJ, so CCJ came into our trade zone here, oops, and it's not a really strong bounce right now, but it is doing, uh, the buyers are doing what they have to get done in order to continue affirming this local daily demand. Uh, it's pretty much a picture perfect point of control test over here. Yeah, pretty much a picture perfect, it's off by like a few ticks or so, six cents. Um, you do have space for a daily higher low, but it just doesn't really look like a very impulsive bounce. It's not the best looking bounce either way. If you did initiate in here, I wouldn't fault you for being kind of aggressive with your profit taking, chopping it up uh, on the back test of this area of supply and throwing your stop under this local low. Remember, this is the aggressive setup, and, and like I said, I I don't I didn't I wasn't so interested in. I would really much prefer to see if this was a look above and fail, and then uh, let us do some like really long term balance like this. 
which again ccj has the propensity to do it, it very often trades sideways so i am hoping that we get another opportunity down here actually but if you use this trade zone ideally you chopped it up by now throw your stuff under this local low at um 50.16 and like i said i would much prefer it if they would come all the way back down to test the lows of this guy so this is the you know prior all-time high structure it's a lot of balance and we traded through it without ever coming back down to the value area low now we don't have to come back to the, the value area low but if this is bigger picture balance then i think the odds of us coming back down there are still um decent and if if not that's fine um i'll just wait for the price to make a solid breakout over all of this structure and then look for a back test of the highs of this guy okay and then finally for MSOs, and I think this is probably the last time I'm going to cover MSOs because, um, you know, obviously it was, I guess the market didn't think, doesn't really think that Trump is going to legalize um, marijuana, even though I, I do think he has said to do so, obviously, you know, politicians, right? So they say stuff on the campaign show, those, we'll say whatever, right? They'll say whatever um, in order to stay in power. So, um, yeah, it looks like the market doesn't think that Trump will um, legalize marijuana. So uh, MSO is flirting with the black dirt breakdown here. Uh, came just shy of testing it at 4.78. So the low of this was at 4.80. So just two cents shy of testing that black dirt breakdown. And the reason why I don't really care to cover it anymore is because, well, one, it just there's no optimism in this space right now. And two, they didn't even come back to test this point of control. So on this is the POC of this uh black dirt breakdown or rather uh, all-time low structure over here and this bounce did not even get to the point of control right so you open up under it drill hold the the um uh all-time low by just a, you know six pennies or whatever and then bounce and you can't even get back up to the point of control i just see no reason to be interested in this space as a buyer if anything it's reasonable to be hitting it as a seller just go ahead and reverse this um so i'm definitely going to reverse here and Something like that, I think it is pretty reasonable to be looking for a sell, um, trying to get back down to here. Okay, so I don't, again, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna care about this um, personally. I, I don't care about it personally. So um, yeah, that's really it. Um, and so for show and tell, I just wanted to go over a concept that I think is really important. Um, so, you know, we, we, we don't want to be too aggressive with sales, right? Because for this buy, the spy is doing just fine. So as long as the spy is doing just fine, then obviously we should, you know, typically stick to buys. You know, you don't really want to swim against the um, trend, where right? the trend is your friend. Now that being said, if you are going to be looking for sales uh, when the market is really strong, then kind of what you want to do is just what we did with KMX. So for KMX, and um, I'll show you the uh, idea here or the original zone or whatnot. So the zone was here. It was identified on uh, this issue on August 2nd. And the reason why we were looking for a sell on August 2nd, here's the trade zone. It's gonna be exactly the same as, um, oops. It's gonna be the same as this zone that's shared over here. So this is the trade zone. Uh, I'll put a bracket over here. So this is the trade zone that we established in uh, August 2nd, right? So August 2nd is over here uh or let's see it's yes august 2nd was this friday over here so we sent out that idea on august 2nd why because on august 2nd this is what the overall market was doing so the overall market on uh, august 2nd was over let's see here so we had just created an area of supply broken down from it created another area of supply and then broken down from it so this was a very notable weakness and so that being said you know, we wanted to protect against the potential of something like this happening, right? Just break down, not really seeing ball through and then ripping to new highs. So we dipped our toes on the sell, but we were specifically picking on something that was relatively weak, like KMX. So KMX at this point in August 2nd was just balancing sideways and had made multiple rejections from this area of supply and this area of supply. So the point is, if you are going to look for sells when the market is just coming off the tires and just starting to show that there's some damage you want to be picking on names that are already showing some relative weakness because if the market continues to rip the odds of uh the relatively weak names not following suit and getting having and running into problems again despite the overall market being strong are very good so just wanted to highlight that concept out because i think it's uh, you know very helpful for um folks who are like you know always trying to time the top right don't you don't have to time the top in the overall market if the market is starting to look toppy 
just look for names that are showing some relative weakness because even if the market does then rip and like get you know get back into strength or whatever then um you have a you have better odds of your sell working um despite the overall market being strong so that is pretty much it um again this you know these trade ideas are shared obviously with the swing report if you're interested in this swing report which is just two novel ideas sent to your uh, inbox every single week any idea that i trade i will i will publish updates live um i'm probably you know i am looking to get more active uh with these live trades now now that the election is over um so yeah links in the description below if you're interested or if you're interested in trading uh, alongside a thousand people or so then uh check out our slack community link is also in the description below if you wouldn't mind hitting us with a like and subscribe that would help us out a lot cost you nothing and that's pretty much it so appreciate you sharing some of your time and energy with me hope you enjoy the rest of your week and hope to see y'all next time farewell